So I want to talk a bit about Simply Business. Um, we have about 430,000 policyholders, very many of them probably part of this John Lewis project we just heard about. Um, we have around 500 employees, around 100 million in premium written every year. Um, we've been growing at a 20% annual clip, which turns out to be very, very good in the insurance space, which generally grows at a negative clip, actually. Um, and yeah, I mean, we insure architects, plumbers, all kinds of very small businesses, people who act a lot like consumers, and, but their businesses depend on this. This is their business's money that they're, they're sharing with us, sharing, giving to us, um, and the insurers on our panel. Um, and we were just bought by Travelers, which is a $30 billion US uh, insurance company for half a unicorn. I don't know. <laughs> bit, 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 smaller, bit smaller than Twilio, but uh, well, you guys weren't bought. But. So um, I want to talk a bit about our customers. They come to us online. Um, as I said before, they have less than 10 employees typically. They really do behave like consumers. And they, they mostly come to us online, and then we engage with them further. Um, and we support over a thousand different trades, businesses, restaurants, shops, um, both professionals, uh, tradesmen, pretty much anything you can think of that someone might do as an individual, photographers, um, we support it in one form or another. And they are able to get customized quotes for insurance from us. Um, our contact center, because we're talking about voice here, mostly. Um, we have inbound sales, customer service, outbound renewals. These are all different teams that, that manage different aspects of the customer life cycle. Um, and the customer life cycle is deeply embedded into our digital life cycle. Um, and that will be important in a moment. We've done about two and three quarters million outbound attempts this, in the last 12 months, and about uh, 760,000 inbound call so sizable. I think we have about 200 people in the contact center um, taking calls in one form or another. And it's in Northampton, since that's what this map's all about. I got, that's, there, no, now we're, and, anyway. Um, so our customer vision, um, we really want to sell to our customers, and this is not our entire customer vision, but we really want to sell to customers in a way that works for them. And that led to an assumption which was sell, they, we want to sell to them in a way that works for us. And we started there. We said, oh, well, we don't really need a contact center. We don't need to speak to anyone. They'll just get such a good experience going through our website that they will never need to speak to anyone. And it turns out that was not the case. Um, and you know, right now, about 40% of our premium is sold via someone who spoke to someone rather than via an online journey even though something like 99% of our customers actually came to us through the web. Um, so the contact center really needed to be core to the customer experience. So that's one bit. The second bit is we didn't want our employees to be autom automatons. Um, so we didn't try to robotize them and eliminate their jobs, give them long scripts, especially if you think back to how many different trades and how many different problems those people have. Um, it just didn't make sense. And culturally, it wasn't really what we wanted to do. So that's kind of what's driving our investment in the Twilio platform and using the Twilio platform for a contact center. Um, so why is it important? Um, I, I guess the first thing is to, to look at what is the customer challenge. And by the way, this is what you land on if you're successful enough in finding a quote. Um, in this case, well, I don't know. I, you know so you can pay monthly, you can pay annually, and you get sort of a comparison. But that might not be enough, right? You're protecting your business. You want to make sure that you're in business tomorrow when, if something goes wrong. Um, so it turns out to be quite an intense purchase for online, right? It's quite a lot of money in some circumstances. Um, you know, here we're looking at you know, an 860 pound purchase. Most of us would stop and look carefully before purchasing online that, and quite a lot of our customers do. Um, their purchase decision can take a while. They visit us a number of different times. And then finally, they do want to feel like the entire experience is unified between all the different channels they're on. Um, this is a, a um, reporting screen about what we see happening to our customers during the new business journey. Um, you shouldn't really be able to read it from way back there, but it should look like a lot of cool colors. 
that's the way we think of it as well. If the colors are good, we're happy. That was a joke. <laughs> Come on, laugh. Oh, well, you can't force people to laugh, can you? My other job is a comedian, that's true. Um, so, so we use things like Bayesian A-B testing. That allows us to run our A-B tests a lot quicker than you would if you just did a normal T-test. And that's been really successful for us where we can determine there is a significant difference and even the size of the difference in what we're doing. And we're doing that with our phone system. And that is not something that I've ever heard of a Genesis or a Navaya or any of those other systems being able to do. And we were able to set up a, a test in about 15 minutes that was able to drive a 3% a three percentage point increase in conversion on one of our IVR channels. So it's really something that works. Um, we've been able to use automation around when to call. So we calculate a propensity to buy and a propensity of time to buy. It's allowed us to organize teams. So how many people do we need on which team? What kind of skills do we want to give people? Um, we use a, a task router for the call routing, so that, that works on both the outbound and the inbound. So if a call comes in, it, it goes to the right person on the team. Now, on an inbound IVR, skills-based routing is nothing like so amazing, but that's just a bit of what we've been able to tie into how we're, how we're using the phone system. And, and this really represents the, one of the important things, which is we get knowledge from the data. So, the fact that we've been able to instrument every step of the customer journey, so we know from the moment they click on a PPC ad all the way until when they've spoken to one of our contact center employees three times and then finally purchased a policy that's different from the policy they started with, we know exactly what happened end to end. And then we can use machine learning to decide the likelihood to buy. We can also use machine learning to improve our product offering um, and so on and so forth. So that's been incredibly core and this is one of the big reasons why we chose a platform like this. Is, is that we could get that full bit, we could connect it all up and then make it work however we want it to. Um, and the final bit is build the suit, which maybe is an answer to the John Lewis challenge that uh, was posed earlier, but we don't want to get rid of people. We want to give people superpowers. We want them to work like um, um, an avatar, you know, so you can, rather than make dumbing you down, replacing you with a robot, we want you to wear a superpower suit and be able to shoot people, jump higher, fly, et cetera. And so what we're really looking at is building that suit for our contact center employees so they don't have to do the things that are easily automated so that they can have those good conversations with customers. Um, all right, so this is our lead prioritization. So I talked about you know, when to call, et cetera. This is our lead prioritization, which runs on Apache Spark in real time. Um, it's a machine learning model that's trained on the historical interactions using 74 different features as I talked about, all the way from beginning to end, form answers is, you know, how many years have you been in business type of things, what emails have you sent us, and your demographics. And it scores those interactions and then comes up with a conversion probability, and that leads to a, yeah, about an 80% predictive um, result. Now, that didn't just do it by itself. That is a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to put that together. And it's been in the d data science team that they've, they've done that um, and you know, achieved that incredible result. But that wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have the information available to us to be able to do that. So, so that's one key thing I would have you think about, which is instrument everything so that you can make use of that data. Instrument in a way where it's telling you what it is, so you're not tea leaf reading, which is, uh, when you say, oh, the slash thanks page, that means someone bought something. Instrument how much they paid, what they bought, and then you'll be able to do this kind of thing with your customers. Um, I just wanted to show a few really nice pictures, like this is our back office we built. Um, yeah, okay, that's good enough. Um, so let's talk, oh, oh man, that got a laugh, so all right. <laughs> Feast your eyes, feast your eyes, oh, okay, yeah. So, so that, that's a phone, and a power switch. Okay, enough. Um, so what have we done so far? Um, so we delivered an outbound dialer in uh, February 2017 with 60 consultants. We've now added to that, um, well, so that's, let, let me talk a bit more about the outbound bit. Um, we've also built an inbound system incrementally as well. And we now have 119 consultants live. Um, and you know, we've, we've done continuous testing on contact strategies. Conti you know, we have live deployment of the system so we can deploy it at any time during the day. 
We're using machine learning algorithms. Um, you know, we look at when is the best time to call. Um, and then if you look a bit more architecturally, um, we, you know, we've, we've used an event sourcing approach to distribute the processing. And that's been incredibly powerful in, in terms of managing the system, making it bulletproof to, you know, the way events can come into a system like this totally out of control. Thank you, Twilia. That's your, your fault. I uh, know, yeah, and customers will also hang up and things like that. But I think one of the key things is, is that it's not a web application. This is a really important point. I was talking to, to a few people earlier. Building an application on top of Twilio requires you to think about the customer interactions in a different way, and therefore the architecture in a different way. It's an event situation where things happen. It's not just a web page, one, one web page after another. Um, and then the other thing that was really interesting that happened was um, that we learned about ways of working. So as we rolled out our outbound dialer, we found that an individual-based bonus didn't work. So our consultants wanted to keep hold of leads, and yet our customers did not care if the same person called them back. And so we had to go to a group bonus. That was one example. And so what we've seen is that as we've rolled out the system, because we're not just replacing what we have today, with, with something that's exactly like what we have today. We've been able to make changes that then also improve the cultural situation for our consultants. Um, so here are a few stats. I'll let you feast your eyes again. Um, you know, including offline MPS score going up, conversions going up, contact rate going up, um, and, and you know, significantly average wait time. I was looking at the, you know, as, as we went live with the um, new inbound system, we saw call handling rates between 98 and 100 percent. Our, our average call handling you know, rate is more like you know, 86 to 93, so a huge um, increase in that, as you can see here. Um, that was really surprising to me because I didn't really expect if you replace one phone system with another that you would, you would get that result. But it turned out that as we had changed the way the system works, as, as we had more cross-functional people, we were able to direct the calls to the right person at the right time and have the right people available without us shifting people from one team to another. Um, so a few things about the Culture API. We've had hackathons, and a few people from Twilio participate in this. Um, you know, so th th the interesting thing about the hackathon is it was driven by ideas from our contact center employees, not by the off-site off team, not by some other team. And they had ideas that aren't maybe the most shocking in the world, but the, but the point was we tried out something. So for example, one of them was, should we send an SMS after we didn't reach someone? What would that be like? What would the impact of that be like? And some of those are actually being rolled out now. So, you know, I always think a hackathon is most worth, I guess if everyone has a great time, awesome. But even more important in a hackathon is, does it change the direction of your business because you had that hackathon? Do you do something different? And we are. We are now pr trying out SMS, uh, actually not just trying, uh, we've put in production SMS on the basis of call outcomes, which has been incredibly powerful. Um, yeah, so it I talked a bit about the cross-functional teams um, and the integrated analytics, um, but some of the results, you know, get more varied and interesting work for our consultants, so they don't have to do the same thing over and over again, which also gives them a better career path and development opportunities and the change incentives, which I mentioned before. Um, so what's next? Um, yeah, I talked a bit about the SMS. We're actually doing that right now, but imagine us connecting email to propensity models. We already have the call-based propensity models. Let's connect that to email. Call me now buttons is one of the things that, you know, I've, I've been wondering about that myself for a while, which is if we don't, we don't have to outbound you if you've already told me you want to receive a call from me. So that would be nice. Um, live chat, renewals, chat bot. All of these are things that will mean that our consultants are having a better conversation, but that we're using that integrated suite of ways of communicating with customers. Um, at the same time. So um, my question for you is, why don't you believe your contact center people can create the future of your business? And here's, here's why I think they should be able to. They're closer to the customer than everyone in this room, probably. Who here works in a contact center? No, nope. didn't think so. Uh, they have lots of brains, actually, turns out. Um, and 
by building the suit, they can use those brains for what those brains are meant to do, which is interact with other people, help them out, and wouldn't they be far more motivated in that circumstance? And that is it. No more jokes, sorry. Thank <laughs> you.